So GANs are this really interesting and powerful tool to create new data. This image of this person here is an example of this because this person does not exist. Using one of the more uh, sophisticated and state-of-the-art GANs, they trained a model on millions of images of people's faces and then asked the model, hey, generate something that looks similar to what I showed you. And the model was shown many, many, many different faces. The GAN eventually learned sort of what constitutes a face, what are faces made of. They're made of eyes, they're made of eyebrows, noses, lips, ears, and started to become quite good at generating new synthetic examples of faces. And this one is taken from uh, this fun website, thispersondoesnotexist.com, which you can literally just sort of refresh over and over again and get a new GAN generation of a person that does not exist. Sometimes you can see sort of interesting things about how GANs uh, succeed and fail. So this is actually a really good one here in terms of uh, one of the ways GANs fail. It learned like, okay, eyeglasses are a thing. But if you notice like around the eyebrows, it forgot to put the lenses, sort of created the bridge and the connector. And there's like a little bit of like lens maybe at the edges, but then it was just sort of like, ah, eh, forget about it. So these are like the world's most crystal clear, perfect glasses apparently. So this is a very neat and interesting tool. And you can use GANs to manipulate images uh, which can make useful products, or can also unfortunately be used for uh, deceitful purposes. Uh, but either way, they are currently a very sort of powerful tool, one that a lot of people are interested in. So the way that they basically work is we're going to play a game between two neural networks. The GAN is really two neural networks. There is a generator network, our friend in yellow on the left. His job is to create new data. That's the generator portion, hence the name. And there's a second network called the discriminator. The discriminator's job is to tell the difference between real data that was passed in and fake data that was created by the generator. They're going to go back and forth playing a game with each other where the generator creates new inputs or creates new images. The discriminator receives real and generated images and tries to separate them into their original groups. And they both learn from each other. During one round, the discriminator receives multiple images. The real ones obviously look very real. The fake one is created by the generator and it takes as input just some random values. Literally, we're just sampling random values and giving them to the generator and saying, hey, take this literal random garbage and make something intelligent out of it or intelligible out of it. At the beginning, it does not do a very good job. It produces something that does not look good and the discriminator has a very easy time sort of separating these things out because they look very different. And they'll both receive a learning signal based off of this game. The generator is going to get a signal saying, well, for the thing that I generated, did the discriminator, D, call it real? And this is just sort of some loss measuring how close we were to getting the discriminator to call the outputs real. The discriminator is going to get a different loss it's going to get a loss over the real and the fake data, which is just a normal classification loss. Did it call the real items real? So it's the green inputs. And did it call the fake item fake? So it wants to classify things correctly. And the discriminator's loss is based off of the discriminator classifying correctly. And the generator's loss is based off of the discriminator making errors on only the data that uh, the generator produced. 
And if you repeat this game over and over and over again, at the beginning, the discriminator does a really good job because the generator is just really bad. Uh, eventually, the discriminator makes a mistake because the generator is starting to get better, right? So at this point, like early on, the discriminator can sort of rely on very simple, not very good features to tell what's real and what's fake because of how bad the generator is. But as the generator gets better, so that's sort of like round two here, that forces the discriminator to start to get better as well. And then the discriminator gets better, that forces the generator to get better. That's sort of how this uh, back and forth goes. And eventually, as we do this many, many times, we hopefully get to the point where the discriminator is probably still winning uh, just because the discriminator has an easy job or an easier job. But the generator is hopefully starting to learn to produce some really realistic looking outputs. So that at a high level is what a discriminator in a, uh, or a GAN is doing. It's these two sub networks going back and forth and playing this game.